and gentlemen, Mr. Mark Kohar. You were here. You were here early in your in your run as the commissioner, like the second day or something. Yeah, that's right. And now, uh, and now you're uh, you're here on the essentially the eve of what is going to be a pretty big day for you, your first Grey Cup. I'm excited. Yeah, very excited. It's a big day for for a lot of people. Even though, I mean, regardless of what the CFL goes through, positive or negative, the, the Grey Cup is the Grey Cup. It, it is. I mean, the, the, the country stops to watch us. We have four four million people watching it. We'll have three hundred thousand people coming to Toronto mm -hmm. over the celebration. It is a time there. Canada just comes together and watches our league, as you said. What what what? I mean, it's. I mean, you obviously can't pick a team that you would like to do, but could you have got a better four than Vancouver, Toronto, two big cities, and then Winnipeg and Regina, two of the hot spots for Canadian football? It's so true. I mean, there. You, you're absolutely right. You know, the West is a hot spot, but you know, Toronto is growing. They they averaged thirty thousand people this year. Didn't you have bigger ratings for the Eastern? Yeah, they did. It was amazing. This year, ratings were higher in the East than they were in the West. So it's growing here, and that's what I'm psyched about. That's totally no excited. kidding. Um, the. Uh, God, you must be dying to hope the Argos make it to the Grey Cup in I Toronto. I can't say anything. I can't. <laughs> <laughs> I can't. Um, no one's watching. None of the governors are watching. That's right. They're not watching no, this no at all. No one's watching this. Um, it's a very tough uh, when I remember I, I, I listen to their sports radio station in Toronto all the time, The Fan, and, yeah. uh, and uh, they, there are a lot of diehard CFL fans on that station. And, uh, um, and when you got the job, there were a lot of people going, well, you were out of your mind. You are walking. <laughs> you might as well try to be the guy that sweeps the minefield. Right. It's a tough job. How do you sum up what, what you've experienced so far in the league? Actually, I think I have the best job in the country. I truly believe that. It is so much fun because I get to travel the country. I get to meet all these uh, rabid fans of our league. Mm -hmm. At the same time, you know, we've got good owners now. So the league's in good shape. So it's all about building now. Mm -hmm. You know, we've got some challenges ahead like any, like any other league does. But... It's a good time for the league, and I'm, I really am having fun. It's almost been a crisis-free season for you. Yeah, that's true. Except for the whole, hey, let's bring an NFL team to Toronto. Who? Yeah, <laughs> right? Yeah, exactly. You know, I mean, listen, we've had a partnership with the, with the NFL for years and years. I mean, 1995, when the league was going through some financial difficulties, the NFL actually gave a loan to the league and, and helped them out. So I'm building a good relationship with Roger Goodell, their commissioner. We're just trying to figure out, you know, how we can, how we can work together to grow football in this country. More and more kids are playing. Uh, you know, if they love football, it's good for the CFL. I imagine that that's a big part of it. Because I know that, um, get, you know, we talk, the way to get people to support sports teams a lot of times is to have the local kids be a part of it. Oh, and absolutely. to get grassroots football, it, it doesn't seem like it's where it needs to be in this country. Um, well, it's amazing. You really need to get kids playing the game. Like, I, my vision is eventually kids, you know, throwing around balls on the street and saying car, rather, yeah. you know, yeah. not, don't move the net, you know, yeah. move the goalposts. <laughs> um, that's you know really how hard it would be to get uprights on a neighborhood yeah, street. That's okay. We'll try. <laughs> we'll come with some minis. <laughs> All right, fine. Um, but, the, you know, in, in, uh, in Quebec, you know, when Bob Wettenhall took over the Alouettes, there were 3,000 kids playing football. There's now over 40,000 kids mm -hmm. playing football. I mean, you go to a, a college game in Laval, you get 20,000 people out to the game. So, you know, it's really important that you get young people tossing around balls. You don't have to put on a helmet. You don't have to put on pads. Mm -hmm. You know, throw it around in the backyard with your friends. And, and, you know, that helps our game. How does the Canadian Football League play a part in that then? Aside from just being the team to aspire to, because when you talk to a lot of high school kids, I mean, I think a lot of it is the fact that there just is no real high school um, culture for football in this country where kids think of, hey, uh, one day I want to be a Blue Bomber. Right, and I think we're changing that. One of the things we're trying to do is really profile our players. So this year was the first year that we went there and said, you know what, Milt Stiegel, I want to, you know, eventually put you on a cereal box. Yeah. I mean, that's really what, I, what we have to do. And, you know, we had a, our first all-star balloting this year. We had 600,000 votes across this country for our all-stars. I mean, it was great. We've never done that before. Mm -hmm. But in terms of the CFL, you know, we got to get out there and support grassroots initiatives. You know, I go to high school football games, and I, I give trophies. I do coin tosses. I talk at high schools. We're talking to participation now about trying to do maybe some family football ideas together. Um, and if With you get, Hal and Joanne? Yeah. <laughs> Remember Hal and Joanne? Yeah. Do they still do that? I love those two. Uh, and are, are the schools open to that? Uh, yeah, they yeah. definitely are. I mean, uh, we, our, Wilson is one of our sponsors, and they, they give balls to schools all the time. But, um, you know, I've been talking to Silicon Lauman. You know, her whole thing is about getting kids active again. You know, in this country, we've got a D in our report cards on kids' health and, and activity. I think the CFL could play a lead role in, in changing that. It's because our only sports we do are in the wintertime. Yeah, that's you know? a, yeah. But we, we sort of talked about your relationship with the NFL, and I know it's certainly in, in, in Toronto it was a very big conversation, is the fact that the Buffalo Bills are now going to be playing some games here. Mm -hmm. um, and, uh, and people are putting that in the same sentence with the, the CFL must hate this. Yeah, I mean, I think it goes back to the issue of 
we have to do it in collaboration w with the NFL because you got a preseason game, you got a regular season game. The NFL is also talking about doing another regular season game in Canada. Mm -hmm. So all of a sudden, you know, there's nine home games for the Argos, and a third of that would potentially be an NFL team. Yeah. You know, what we're really doing is, can we collaborate? Can we cross promote it? Can you sell Argo tickets with the Bills tickets and do those type of things that help both league? If we do that, then I'll be happy. Does, does uh, an NFL team in Toronto seriously affect? the Canadian Football League if there was an actual franchise here? Well, I mean, think about it. This is the media capital of, of yeah. the country. It's Right now, it's a corporate capital of the country. A lot's moving out west, but, yeah. you know, it really is. Oil. Uh, oil. Yeah, oil, <laughs> exactly. Um, those two things have a, an economic impact in our league. Right. So we have to make sure that both, it's not just the Argonauts. It's, you know, it's down the street. It's the Thai Cats sure. as well. Both those franchises have to be strong for the, for the CFL to be strong. What about other cities? Uh, and I, I know having you on the show is great because there's a lot of things to talk about, but as people watch us across this country, what does a community Community need to have mm -hmm. for there to be a, a viable shot at, at a Canadian football league team, aside from a stadium. Yeah, well, I mean, that's the first point. I mean, you really do. I think you played a college yeah, field for yeah, a while, exactly. right? Exactly. I mean, we, we did an exhibition, exhibition game in Halifax at St. Mary's, but that's only 8,000 seats. For the economics to work for a CFL team, you need mm -hmm. about 25,000 seats. So you need, you need seats, you need, you, know, you need bums in the seat, and you need a, you need a, a fan base that is, is crazy for the game. Like, Quebec City, I think, would be a great market. Mm -hmm. Going back to Ottawa is really important. We're talking about going back to Ottawa. Again? Yeah, well, the, the issue now, it's pretty interesting, is that Frank Clair Stadium, uh, they're, they're knocking down the south stands there because they were condemned. Right. That's created an environment in Ottawa where people are saying, well, how do we rebuild that, that whole community, the 40 acres around Lansdowne Park? And if the CFL could be a part of that, um, that'd be great. You know, but, we're all about communities. That's what the CFL but is. But as a commissioner, do, do, do you look at, because it's not like the Atlanta Flames that failed forever ago in the NHL and then the NHL went back to the Ottawa uh, mm -hmm. the franchise in the football. That's not that long ago when that right. didn't work. And I think what you need, you need local ownership and you need great operators. Mm -hmm. um, that's the first and foremost, uh, the two most important things. And But we're going to take our time on it. You know, we have been talking to some groups, but because the league is doing so well right now, um, I don't want to rush to go back there and make a mistake. I can't afford to do that. Right. Do you, do you have, I mean, you have a long contract, relative, for a commissioner. Yeah, absolutely. It was a five-year contract. Yeah. Um, did but, you demand that to take this job? Yeah, absolutely, I did. But, you know, the, you know, what I'm doing today, I would do the same five years from now when they're thinking about renewing my contract. Mm -hmm. You know, as I said, I have a great job. I'm loving it. Uh, but what I'm trying to do for the league is really um, take it to the next level and working with our governors to make that happen. You know, the, the Canadian Football League, one of the things that you, you always hear about is, is the history of this, is this sort of, uh, league. And you see, you see a lot in the way it's marketed and the way it's, it's sort of the fan base. How, how does the, and I ask this because I go to a lot of Dodger games, right? And the Los Angeles Dodgers have done this amazing job of reaching out to new Americans, mm -hmm. to people who did not grow up watching baseball in Los Angeles. And I wonder, as Canada's, as the dynamic of this country changes, mm -hmm. in order for the Canadian Football League to be relevant in 10, 15 years, right. Do you need to find a way to get people who didn't, who are new to this country, who didn't grow up watching the Bomber games? Oh, uh, absolutely. And one of the things we do, and I think this is the difference between other professional sports leagues, the Toronto Argonauts last year did 780 player appearances in Toronto. 780. I mean, it's, it's an amazing statistic in terms of them being out there. Yeah. The Bombers do it, you know, the Stamps do it. Everyone is out in their community, and you're reaching out to the communities. you got to go at the grassroots level, mm -hmm. and you go into the communities. You go into Regent Park. You, 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 go, you go into these areas where there are uh, new immigrants into this country, and you get them indoctrinated into the game. You toss around a ball. It's easy to do. All you need is a ball. Mm -hmm. You know, you don't need a hoop. You don't need anything else. You, yeah. and, and, and the simplicity of that, I think, is what's uh, helping our game. Is it... Um... <coughs> Is that, is that an easy job? Uh, I think it's a long-term approach. Yeah. So it's not saying, okay, let's do a, a ticket discount and you know, try and get people in because we got you know, some great rock and roll band playing at halftime. Mm -hmm. It's really about a gradual approach. And if you look over the past six years, the league is continuing to grow in our attendance. Attendance is up, TV ratings are up, uh, sponsorship is up, you're doing fine. Um, what, when you, it's easy to look at that and go, we're okay. Mm -hmm. What do you need to do? Um, I think the most important... Drug policy? Uh, working on the drug policy. Uh, we talked about the first yeah. time I was here. That's important to a lot yeah, of people. I got a first draft of it. I've okay. been working internally on that. We're going to, after the after the season's over, I'm going to meet with the Players Association about that. Uh, and is, it a, is it a legitimate drug policy? They're, they're really open in, to uh, discussing this. Like okay. They really are. So uh, that's one thing that I'm pushing. Um, the, the product on the field is really important. So mm -hmm. when you talk about the game, and we can do all these marketing initiatives, like we're doing some great things about greening the Grey Cup, yeah. because I've been talking to young fans that it's important. We've got to make sure the, the product on the field, so you always need to recruit you know, great Canadian talent. You need to continue to invest in officiating, and that's the stuff we're doing. And you've got to let the provincial governments, you've got to make them ease up so people can tailgate properly. 
That's a good idea. Yeah. Because yeah. they can't yeah. tailgate in this province, yes. you know. Yes. I'm well, just saying. Hamilton. Hamilton, yeah. The Box J boys <laughs> are very good in Hamilton. <laughs> it's, a, it's, it's a pleasure to see you. Yeah. You have a big, great cup coming up, man. Thank, thank you for your yeah, time. Great to see you. Good to see you. Yeah. Come here to the Canadian Football League. And don't forget, there's big football on TV this weekend. The CBC's got a big game. It's going to be on CBC. The pregame show, 12.30 Eastern Time, hosted by the great Elliot Friedman. Uh, and, of course, it's the East final. Winnipeg and Toronto. That's a big rivalry. 1 p.m. Eastern right here on uh, the Canadian Broadcasting Corporation. Then 4.30 Eastern Time is the West final. The Green Riders and the British Columbia Lions. And then, don't forget, it's the big one, the Grey Cup, November 25th, also on CBC. Sounds like a theme here. And then they leave us for no good reason. It wasn't my fault. All right. We got one hell of a songwriter who's not afraid to speak his mind on the way.